The Yuval, a majestic and ancient species towering at one five meters tall, stood in contemplation, his fur bristling as he accessed his data pad to review the new directives. The Yuval were revered beings within the galaxy, embodying grace and wisdom. As he read the urgent message displayed on his data pad, Klaxus Zolnak, a first lieutenant of the Imperial Ground Forces, felt a wave of dread wash over him. He didn't bother finishing the entire encrypted text. Instead, he shut his eyes tightly, his four-digit clawed hands covering his face, while the heavy thud of 100-ton tanks echoed in the background, reinforcing his depleted battalion. Forced to abandon his platoon for a temporary assignment, one designated for humans, Plaxus couldn't help but entertain the grim thought, perhaps my demise will come swiftly. With a heavy heart and an air of defeat, Plaxus muttered to himself as he lowered his hand from his face in resignation, feeling the weight of the inevitable. As he stood there, his gaze fixed and empty, he was suddenly jarred by the unmistakable sound of rapid barking, a noise unique to only one species humans. Two of them strolled by, seemingly amused, barely sparing him a glance as they continued their incessant chatter. Claxus's disdain for these vexing and hairless creatures only grew stronger with each passing moment. These sorry excuses for beings, they ain't warriors, just a bunch of rabble. How they even managed to get themselves up to the stars, let alone offer any real help in this war, is beyond me. These things not only disrespected Imperial officers, but they couldn't be bothered to join in any operations in decent numbers, always off doing who knows what, and they got this nasty habit of insulting you with their smart remarks like, you're not my boss, then they strut off with that annoying barking. Try to get them in line, and all you get is excuses or silence. They barely even listen to their own officers. They call their leaders by their first names and only pay attention when our top dog is around. It's a joke, really. These uncivilized apes barely cracked FTL travel when the Empire came knocking, offering him a sweet deal in exchange for their help. And what do they offer us? A measly 150 so-called warriors. The humans got handed centuries worth of medical, terraforming, and engineering tech, and all they got to do is help us fend off the horrors of the universe. This nightmare we're facing, they call it the Kong. Cold-blooded reptilian beasts, standing two meters tall, sneaking around and tearing through the galaxy like it's theirs. They see every intelligent being as nothing but food or fancy treats, turning every world they conquer into a living nightmare. Despite knowing the stakes, those damn humans only dispatch tens of thousands of their so-called warriors to the most critical spot in this whole damn war. Voltuk, a godforsaken tropical nightmare, sweltering hot and thick with jungle. This place was a real cesspool, with its foliage so dense and its critters so hostile, just getting around was as dicey as taking on the scourge. But securing this dump meant locking down a key spot for the Empire. You snag this planet, you got yourself a fortress to safeguard the whole dang solar system. And that solar system, it's a prime launch pad for us to hit the Kong where it hurts the most. This spot, it's the Kong's golden goose, and they knew it. They fought like Hillians, right down to the last ship, the last man, and when they ran out of juice for their fancy weapons, they came at you with nothing but teeth and claws. Despite the planet's moons in orbit cluttered with thousands of wrecked ships, only half of their orbital defenses were down. On the flip side of the planet lay their toughest spots, armed to the teeth with their heaviest guns. So, to regroup the fleet and lock down the rest of the solar system, it was up to the Imperial ground forces to make moves and shut down their cannons. But the scourge, they were dug in deep, Millions of their fighters holding down the fort, defending those cannons like their lives depended on it. Every inch of ground gained cost us dearly, with thousands paying the ultimate price. The jungle choked us into tight spots, with only our heavy armor keeping us safe from ambushes. And with both sides packing new tech, drones and targeting systems were basically worthless. Their hit-and-run tactics tore through us, turning our tanks into coffins. We chased them into the jungle, but that turned out to be just as deadly with ambushes waiting at every turn. The body count. It was unreal. Emperor, watch over us, Claxus muttered as he headed back to base. His men snapped to attention as he walked in, showing him the respect he deserved. Standing tall, Claxus couldn't help but admire the real soldiers before him. At ease, he commanded, taking a moment to gather himself before turning to his staff sergeant. Look after my boys, all right. I'm not sure I'll be making it back from this one. I've got recon duty with those apes. His staff sergeant looked back at him with sympathy, offering a salute. I'll do my damnedest to get as many of them home safe, sir. 
With a solemn nod, Plaxus stowed away his officer gear, mentally preparing for the task ahead. As he headed towards the human section of the base, the sight of massive rail guns being manned by shouting soldiers caught his attention. The thunderous crack and the energy hum as the projectiles launched left him bewildered. What were they thinking, installing warship batteries in their outpost? And what were they aiming at? Didn't they realize gravity would just pull down whatever they shot? And did they not know their projectiles would liquefy in the atmosphere at standard power levels? Claxus's concern only deepened. He was ordered to go on recon with only six of these. Humans? Did they not grasp that orbital or drone recon was a no-go with Kong anti-drone tech in play? How the heck are we supposed to scout out enemy positions? He got shut down and was told to zip it. Pick his top Kong speaking guy and send him over to the human barracks. Problem was, he was the only one fluent in Kong. Wandering around the human side of the joint base some more, a couple of humans clocked him and asked, You the language dude? Klaxus nodded nervously, taking in the hustle and bustle of this side of the base. The humans exchanged looks and pointed to a barracks. You're looking for the Afo guys, they're over there. Klaxus was puzzled. Afo. The humans chuckled. Advanced force operation, recon stuff. Just walk in, they're expecting you. Making it to his assigned human barracks, Claxus couldn't help but notice the massive tarmac nearby. Vitals revving up, soldiers geared up and ready to roll. Their gear was strange, all irregular shapes and earthy browns, blending in with the surroundings. Approaching the door, he spotted a sign that sent a chill down his spine. A skull with words in both human common and galactic common. Military Assistance Command, Valtuck Studies and Observations Group. Inside, men with green faces bustled about. Hell, it's about time, Claxus muttered to himself, stealing his nerves as he stepped inside. Claxus stood there, jaw practically hitting the floor as he gawked at what seemed like a giant among men, clad in the same funky uniform as everyone else, but towering just shy of two meters tall. His fur bristled as he shrunk under the giant's intense stare, the bald behemoth covered head to toe in tattoos, sucking on a burning stick. Meeting his gaze proved harder than Claxus anticipated, especially with that mechanical eye glaring back at him, surrounded by scars from who knows what. Emperor, help me. Humans can hook up with machines? Claxus wondered to himself, finally getting his act together enough to salute the obviously higher-up officer. First Lieutenant Claxus Zolnak reporting for duty, he managed to squeak out, throwing his arm across his chest in a textbook imperial salute. Don't salute me, kid, or any officer, especially not outside. The giant shot back, extending his hand. Lieutenant Colonel James Finlay, and dropped the rank talk outside of briefing rooms. Feeling a bit thrown off by these new rules that went against everything he knew about military protocol, Plaxus shook Finlay's hand. Getting jostled around like a ragdoll in the process, he even dropped some of his gear in the chaos. Welcome to the team room, Finlay greeted him, leading the way further inside. Then, in that deep, gravelly voice of his, he added, Just remember, if you ain't invited here, you'll catch a beating so only come in when we say so. An eerie quiet settled in as he realized it wasn't just Lieutenant Colonel Finley giving him the side eye, it was everyone in the room, and those glares said one thing loud and clear, they hadn't stamped their approval on him yet. Finley spun around and addressed the room. He's a temp, so don't you dare lay a finger on him. I'm talking to you, Gabe. Plaxus followed Finley's gaze to a seemingly ordinary guy with light brown skin, a bit of fur on his head, and a hint of a beard. Claxus couldn't quite pin down what made this guy so menacing, but questioning a senior officer's judgment on his own crew wasn't his style. There was a resentful click of a tongue after the accusation. Finally sighed. Fucking psycho. That's Gabriel, or Gabe. Don't listen to a damn word he says unless it's been cleared by that guy. Finally pointed to another unassuming figure, this one larger but just as unremarkable, with curly black fur on his head, a bushy beard, and dark skin. I'm the operations sergeant, Eve. Just call me Barbecue, the annoyed soldier clarified. Barbecue? Claxus echoed, his confusion evident in his twitching ears. I'm Haitian. Finally shook his head and grabbed Claxus by the shoulder before he could dig any deeper, starting to introduce him to the rest of the crew. Forget it. Gabe's our resident sociopath, our sniper, and the engineering sergeant, finally explained, as Gabe barely acknowledged Claxus's presence with a nod. And this is Cheris, our medic. You call her Doc. You protect Doc. Doc keeps you alive. Claxus couldn't help but notice the lightly brown-skinned woman, 
a shade lighter than Gabe, she flashed one of those unsettling, friendly smiles humans were so fond of. Compared to the rest of the team, she seemed petite, her tattoos snaking down her neck and arms, twisting and moving like some eerie river. Sometimes, he swore he saw cartoon characters darting among the thorns and skulls. Emperor, save me, Plaxus muttered under his breath as he realized she had mechanical arms. And the oddity didn't stop there as he was introduced to the final three members of the team. First up was Bo, the weapons sergeant, clean-shaven and nearly as imposing as Finlay, with skin just as pale. They called him Animal Mother, and he eyed Claxus like he wanted to tear him apart. You eat trash, he spat out, leaving Claxus stunned. What? No, Claxus stammered, caught off guard. Finlay intervened with a facepile. Shut it, Bo, for God's sake. Bo defended himself. What? He looks like a damn raccoon. Next was Jin, the communication sergeant, or just Jin for short. He seemed harmless, unassuming, and just a tad taller than the woman. Pale like fine land Bo, but there was something about his features. Different. Plaxus extended his hand to Jin, taken aback when Jin not only shook it, but also bowed. Finally, some respect. Maybe I can vibe with this one, Plaxus thought to himself as the last member of the team was introduced. The intelligence sergeant, Sergei, sized Claxus up with a scrutinizing gaze, making him feel like he was under a microscope. What the hell are you wearing? Sergei's disbelief was palpable, arms crossed in apparent disgust. Claxus glanced down at his meticulously pressed dark blue armor, complete with a gold sash denoting his rank and unit. Before he could defend himself, Sergei cut him off. Nope, don't even bother. I don't want to hear it. With a sigh of exasperation, Sergei closed the gap and started stripping Claxus of his gear. Alarm, Claxus tried to protest, but Sergei paid him no mind. You don't need this, or this, and what the hell is this? An air horn? Claxus found himself effectively disrobed, the clang of armor hitting the floor echoing through the room. How the hell do you guys even fight with all this crap on? It's like a damn beacon saying shoot me, Sergei exclaimed. Turning to Gabe, Sergei issued an order. Go to the fab and whip up some gear for this numbskull before he gets us all killed. I'll send you the measurements. Gabe let out a resigned sigh, shooting a glance of exasperation before standing up and leaving the room, grumbling under his breath. Claxus, feeling flustered, snapped back. We fight with honor. We don't skulk in the grass like you savages. Just then, Gabe sauntered in, letting out a single amused bark. Ha, huh, sure thing, he chimed. Sergei, irritated after stripping Claxus down to the bare minimum, left only a single ablative plate on his chest for protection against energy weapons, along with his boots, water pack, and weapons. Claxus resisted as Sergei started peeling away his actual armor. How the hell am I supposed to fight without these, he protested. Sergei swatted his hand away. Chill out. You'll thank me later. Ounces equal pound, and pounds equal pain. You don't even need half this crap. Reluctantly, Claxus surrendered to his fate. Once Sergei finished stripping him down and took his measurements, he nudged Claxus into the briefing room. Finally, finding the whole situation amusing, followed Claxus into the room, the poor furry guy looking utterly violated. Claxus, his temper simmering, growled, Am I supposed to lead this band of misfits into battle? These brutes don't even have an officer to keep them in line. By the Emperor, do you expect me to control them? The room erupted with hearty laughter. Ha ha ha, no way in hell. You answer to Master Sergeant Eve, came the booming response. Claxus felt a wave of horror wash over him, his mouth flapping like a fish out of water, unable to muster the proper respects owed to a superior officer. What? You expect me to take orders from enlisted men? This is madness. I'll report this to my commander. You're all out of your damn minds. Finally whipped out his data pad, showing Claxus the orders from the High Marshal, the top dog commanding all ground forces on the planet. You're going to follow orders to the letter, or they'll reconsider your officer status. It'd be a damn shame to see a promising lieutenant reduced to a private, finally warned. Claxus felt a shiver of fear run down his spine. All those years of schooling, the sacrifices his family made to secure him a shot at officer status, it all hung in the balance. The thought of being stripped of his newfound peerage was unbearable. His dreams of joining the ranks of nobility seemed dashed. With a heavy heart, Claxus relented, and finally his face lit up. Fantastic. Let's kick off this briefing. We've got a tight schedule to stick to be ready to move in 30 minutes. 90 minutes later. 
Clad in the same oddly painted armor as his human comrades, Claxus sat beside Gabe on the bench, watching the jungle blur past. They were aboard the most heavily armed transport craft he'd ever seen, flying low and fast. The canopy felt within arm's reach, making his nerves buzz with tension. But despite the anxiety of the ride, the mission they were assigned felt like something out of a nightmare. These humans were out of their minds. Their task, a long-range patrol deep into enemy territory, they were to observe enemy movements, eavesdrop on their communications, and shadow them. To make matters worse, they'd have to trek 50 kilometers on foot from their drop-off point, navigating the unforgiving jungle and its treacherous swamps. It was madness, pure and simple. Claxus could feel irritation prickling his fur from the dye they'd applied to blend in with the foliage, and that darn female seemed positively gleeful about smearing it on him. He sighed, trying to push away thoughts of her malicious grin and shrill laughter as she treated him like a pup. To deal with the situation, Claxus focused more on the transport craft and its crew. It struck him as odd four dedicated crew members and redundant systems added to a standard transport VTOL. Once sleek and brightly colored blue, the VTOL now sported a black, blocky appearance. Its once smooth design was now jagged, with sensors and systems protruding from its surface. The heavily modified utility aircraft was armed to the teeth with every weapon imaginable bolted onto it. A 30-mm rail autocannon adorned its nose, controlled by the co-pilot. Two 12-mm, three-barreled rotary railguns flanked the sides next to the sliding doors, manned by additional crew members. The humans had even affixed two rocket pods to the winglets, each loaded with 19 high-explosive rockets, and nearby, four unknown missiles with constantly swiveling sensors added an air of mystery. Claxus snapped out of his thoughts when his HUD received a ping, and the human beside him signaled with a single finger, barking over the comms. One minute, every human double-checked their weapons, ensuring they were properly loaded. Their weaponry was mostly uniform, with minor personal variations and attachments. Each carried a chemical kinetic weapon with a short 10-inch barrel, equipped with a suppressor to reduce sound and muzzle flash. The weapon used a special 7x45 mm caseless ammunition, its propellant a new form of plastic explosive tailored for firearms. Claxus had often wondered why the humans stuck with mechanical weapons instead of switching to energy-based ones. Their answer? Mechanical weapons don't break when you empty them. As he checked his rifle and adjusted his headset and augmented reality eyewear, he heard the call out for 30 seconds. Peering down, he wondered how they'd managed to navigate the dense jungle without a clearing. Ten seconds, everyone rose to their feet adjusting their rucksacks and standing poised by the door. With a whoosh, the door slid open and a thick rope descended. One by one, the humans rappelled down, like firefighters descending to the scene of a blaze. Claxus hesitated for a moment, gripping the rope tightly. I can't turn back now, he thought, and followed suit, descending into the darkness below. Darkstar, this is Malice. We're on the ground and moving to our designated area of operations. Over. That wraps up today's episode. Drop a comment below if you enjoyed this tale and crave more.